Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the review of the Serie A action this weekend. Um, wearing Milan. Um, yeah, Milan was the two teams where I have double shirts. So more than double. <laughs> Milan and Roma, Milan won. Uh, I soon have another team where I have double. Um, which are up there. Yes, I ordered the shirt. I ordered the shirt, but not with name and number, because I couldn't do that. But yeah, it will come and I'm very happy about that. And you know, I am also always a little bit on the lookout for these two guys uh, to double up there, but have not really found yet uh, one that I, I really would like to have. So, you know, to have the big teams a little bit out. Um, headlines this weekend in Serie A. Well, I think the first one is Juve wins the um, Turin Derby late. We having Inter banging a, 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 another win, Sassuolo and Roma go, goalless. And then Napoli and Milan get wins that one would expect, although the Milan win probably was a little bit more labored. Uh, but we'll talk about that in the end. So yeah, let's start with the games. I actually, I saw I think only two games full and the rest more or less in highlight form or you know on second screen and so on and uh, Spezia Lazio was one of those where uh, I think I saw the first half and I saw the two goals by Immobile and Milinkovic Savic uh, and seemed Lazio's fairly in control again playing in those green jerseys. Well, yeah. uh, Spezia then pulls one back in the 64th but Lazio hangs on to get uh, the win. Juve Torino. I think that is definitely a game we need to talk about because Juve did not show up in the first half. It was rather poor showing there. And in the ninth minute, Torino takes a lead through Nkulu that actually epitomized how bad Juve have become defensively. I mean, the way uh, the, uh, the Coraba and Saldis played to Nkulu, uh, no, 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 other Nkulu, uh, Mete. And whatever the Juve defense is doing there, the ball can come to Nkulu, who then is suddenly kind of free in the box and puts it in the internet. Um, and Torino definitely had the chances to actually double the lead, uh, and namely Belotti, who had a thunderous shot. But um, yeah, was not a good half. And it was again one of those games where Torino actually is playing a good first half. And then in the second half, I don't think either they are just barely hanging on or they don't have enough courage. Whatever it is, Juve found the switch. They seemingly got already the um, uh, equalizer through Quadrado in the 57th, but it was called off for offside. And it was in such a way that I looked at this, it looked all right. And then I was flabbergasted when I came back a little bit later and saw that this goal was not given. It was still 1-0 Torino. They then get, and Quadrado was the uh, the linchpin there because he then assisted the two goals to turn the game around. Uh, the one through West McKenney was uh, in the 77th and at that point I think if you're a Torino fan you were hoping can we please get this point? No, it was not to be. Uh, Juve then just made a power play around it and in the end probably uh, one has to say got the deserved winner through Bonucci, although to be honest, of all the people on the, on the pitch, Bonucci is the one that, ah, I don't like that guy. Uh, I, and it's not because of his time at Milan, I just think uh, he's way past his time. Simply said. So yeah, Juve gets the 2-1 win uh, in the derby. It was a must win, but as we'll see, Juve is also still unbeaten and that is a quality yes you might not uh, be winning at, uh, a lot of my yes you might not be on top yet but Juve has this sort of quality to not at least not lose at the moment and uh, that also has 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 become and that's why I do not count out Juve although everyone is ready to uh, throw them under the uh, table or whatever that they're not going to go make the top four I think Juve very much will be in the top four if not more Let's say that. Another team that actually, the, the more I look at the teams, squads and so on, Inter should be the team to, to win Serie A this season. They have such a deep squad and if Lukaku is fit, he is such a strong guy up front that I keep uh, hauling praises onto him because I honestly have to say, I like the player and he's playing for the team that I like least in Serie A. I really like the way Luke Lukaku is playing. Such a bull in the side on the, on the first goal when he's wrestling with um, the uh, Japanese uh, guy from Bologna. 
let me just check his name uh tomiyasu yes i mean as no, no, no. Yes, it's wrestling, but uh, Lukaku is uh, twice the weight of uh, of him, and basically he wrestles him on the floor, uh, then gets the ball and it goes into net. Var look, look at it. There was nothing there. Can I say again how much I hate those Bologna away jerseys? Uh, they just don't make any sense to me uh, at, at, at all. Inter controlling the game. I had it on a second screen. Controlling game without being too uh, dazzling, but then Hakimi. Just before the half, with a great run, uh, makes it 2-0 uh, uh, after Brozovic assist. But how he comes from the right flank into the box, that was uh, re really nice. Then you think Inter is controlling and suddenly Vignato pulls one back in the 67. Oh yeah, I was a little bit more interested in, in, in the game at that, that moment. Looked a little bit too old to the right. The uh, problem is that Hakimi just three minutes later make, makes 3-1. Yeah, game done. We can go to bed. <laughs> it was li it was li literate that I, I, I felt. Yeah, I'm not gonna watch more. Uh, let's go to bed. So Inter gets that win. Um, Hellas and Cagliari won one. Didn't see much much of that. I saw actually the Roma Sassuolo game, and it says nil nil here. And everyone uh, would kind of say, yeah, this must be important. No, this was an actually quite interesting game. Uh, really, really crazy game in many regards. Um, it took a little while. I mean, the pitch was wet. It was a lot of rain. Um, and I have to also say the action was maybe not the greatest to begin with because of the heavy pitch. Uh, and also Roma playing in the black jerseys. That's why I put the black Roma jersey there. I don't like those. I think Roma can have such nice black jerseys. These ones are not nice. Uh, I have it's just something not to write with those. Anyway. Uh, Pedro gets a yellow card for headbutting at 11th and then makes a rather stupid foul on midline. Yes, from, from behind. It was every bit of a yellow card and has to walk in the 41st. And at that point, you're thinking, oh, Sassuolo has a chance. Uh, and then it was still, I think the game remained rather even. And I have to say that uh, I'm getting less and less impressed with Sassuolo. They can be a fun team, but at the moment they're also hit, hit, hitting a little bit of a rough patch. And you can see it uh, here and there, yeah. They have quite some uh, good players in there, but something's not quite clicking. And so even with a man down, I think Roma was well in the game. And uh, Roma is also a team that is actually fun to watch. The one thing that I have to fault Roma for is that with all the flair that they have and the great play, they are not consistently getting results. And that game against Sassuolo is one of those. I mean, you get a stupid red card by Pedro. Then Mkhitaryan scores a goal that was long in the uh, making, uh, should have been uh, Berbert earlier, but then just before he gets the ball, um, Jaco makes a foul and that's why VAR calls it off. Um, in the second half, then uh, the other side, um, a goal for Sassolo is called, 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 called off because there was um, an offside in the build-up. So yeah, it should have been probably a 1-1. One, one, uh, in many regards, because I got, the ref gave both goals, but in, but now in VAR times those are called off in the ends nil nil. But I think it was a rather up and down uh, game at times. But then there were also times where uh, the, it was a lengthy game as well. So you know, it was not the greatest, but it was interesting to say the least. Uh, at the same time, Parma and Benevento played a nil nil. Uh, Udine Atalanta had been called off. I actually do not know now why. I always want to say COVID, but it might not have been. That way, uh, Atalanta probably not too unhappy about it because they can prepare for the big clash with Ajax um, during the midweek. Napoli Crotone, beautiful goal by Insigne to start it out, and they played, of course, in the nice jerseys. And I say it again, I am very happy. I was going nuts last week um, that I couldn't get this jersey because uh, a it turns out that they accepted orders sooner when I made last video say they're gonna ship until February. Now they start we start sh shipping on December 4th, 14th. Then I go in, in there and suddenly it's only small available. Um especially for customization, which I actually want to have an insignia back on there in the patch, which would have made that shirt really, 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 really expensive. But I thought it looked much better with it. And then I just by pure luck two days later. I try uh, the big sizes and yeah, I can add them to the cart if I don't put a cast composition. Of course, yeah, I ordered and my whole uh, 
bowling over other jerseys that I've, I have on a get because that's suddenly, I mean, I was looking at Serie yeah, I was looking at Serie A, Real Sociedad, all that kind of stuff, and then I can order it and, you know, I feel calm, I feel rested. This hopefully will arrive before Christmas, so quite happy with that. And even if it comes to a new year, quite happy with that. Yeah. Insigne scores, beautiful goal. Um, I think then when Petr Jone for a uh, stretched out leg gets sent off after war, probably right, so all dams break loose. And Lozano uh, scores another one in the 58. Deme then gets his goal and uh, late Petania 4 0. Napoli. Um, of course, I saw some Doria Milan. Uh, first jerseys. I was really at the whole. I mean, I saw that some some Doria will play in, uh, will re release separate special jerseys. Didn't really didn't really click in me that they will actually play with them against Milan. But I have to say, uh, I was wondering really what will Milan play in, and then it made all sense. Milan thinks some some Doria is playing in those half half looking Andrea Doria jerseys with dark practice and Milan can play in their home look. Otherwise, I would have thought that Milan would play like with Napoli. And I'm interested because this time, time around, with this blue jersey, the, the bluish jersey, blue-greenish jersey that uh, Milan has, uh, there is not an obvious away color to uh, blue teams with like Nap Napoli and stuff, something like that, and then Milan has to probably play in black pants. But yeah, worked out fine. Uh, at the beginning, I think Sampdoria had really a chance where Milan was a little bit on the back foot and everyone was talking, there's no Ibrahimovic, but I have to say the absences of Benacer and Kier uh, worried me a whole lot more than Ibra because I know that we have the goals up front. Somehow we always, uh, we, Milan always manages to get those goals. So I was not so worried about Slatan missing. I, I really had wor worries about Kier, who uh, really steadied the defense despite his age and Benacer, he's a rock in there. Especially I, the, the pairing uh, ben, ben, Benazir and uh, Kessie is just awesome. Absolutely. This is the African heart of Milan. Tonali was playing nothing against Tonali, but I think Tonali really uh, still needs to arrive at, at the club. Kessie getting a holding yellow card and I think it was a necessary one really worried me because I know Kessie it comes through his physicality. Huge credit to him. He made it through the game, the entire game, and I think he was there. he was my personal man of the off of the match, especially late. So as I said, Sampdoria early on had really good chances. Uh, there was a series where, like for five minutes, Milan could not clear the ball out out, out of box. But then Milan got better, um, had control, uh, launched some attacks that you know fizzled you usually up with, with the at the last pass, but uh, looked actually quite quite good. But uh, unfortunately, it was about to go nil-nil in into the half, and then it's a penalty where yeah, Youngster should not have the hand that high. I know there have been discussions, uh, not anything that I watched, but on podcasts, they say, oh, this was kind of weird. Uh, this should not be a penalty. I honestly think by the rules, this is a pen penalty, so we don't need, need to discuss it. You don't have to have the hand that high. Uh, that was not uh, like a jumping egg, actually, whatever. Anyway. Uh, it is a penalty in Cassier down the middle. The goalie was then standing up, but going, go, going the other way. I mean, if he stretches the hand out, he might have been saved it, but it's 1 0 Milan. And I actually felt good. In the second half, I think some Doria then realized there's something in it and we can get something, but I think they realized it too late. Milan fought in this game, and that's what I really like. This was an absolute uh, huge fight. Um, Brian Diaz, who did not look uh, well well in the first half, came off. Hauge came on. I think Hauge should have started, and that actually calmed me because I know that Hauge is one of uh, is a player that has a lot of creativity in him, um, and so it proved a little bit later. Um, I have to say for. The one nil. It was never that Sampdoria is threatening, but some Sampdoria tried to actually get back into the game and realized it. But uh, Milan with a big fight, and it was all Cassie. Whenever there was a mistake, Cassie came up to uh, fill the hole and make the night that attack. It. Absolutely amazing. Also, Don Donnarumma made, of course, a few saves. So, you know, I felt actually good. Gabi was, was another one. He kicked him from Kier, but he really, really played well. So, um, for all the failings on one side, Milan could uh, greatly make up, uh, up for it. Then Castillejo comes on for Salamakers, who actually had a so-and-so game for once. Uh, 
Hauge plays a pass to Rebic, back with the first touch, a cast, Echo makes the goal. One, a uh, two nil, and I'm thinking, <sighs> problem is, Ekdal pulled one back just a few, uh, five minutes later. And so all the advantage with, with, with the two nil, they had to then really dig in. But they dug in and they got the, the, the result. Sampdoria only had very late, one less chance, and that was that. So yeah, Milan pulling off another important win, and now this without the spine. I mean, Donnarumma out there, that would be, but Kier, Benazir and Ibra finding ways to win, that makes it positive. I think Milan is poised for a top four finish, which we can also see in the table. Uh, Milan out clear, clear, again, favorites at the moment, according to a model for the championship, but it's only 10 games in out of 38, so a little bit more than a quarter of a season. Uh, yeah, but five points clear, I know we have... Uh, it doesn't matter what will happen next round, Miller will still still be in first. Inter, first challenger. Um, I think Inter will, in the end, end up winning the title, although Napoli could also do a challenge. Um, a little bit hampered by the one-point deduction. Juve, I think, also know. I think the top four are really taking uh, uh, shape at the moment. I think those four will be the ones that will be there in the end as well, because Roma is not consistent enough. That's what I think. Sassuolo so also not out of the top, top four, and I think they will challenge for European spots, but not that much more. We have to see what Atalanta will do. Uh, still not counting them out. Uh, Lazio uh, similarly. On the bottom, yeah, I didn't say Fiorentina in Genoa played a 1-1 one -one late on. Ah, uh, Fiorentina doesn't get out of trouble there. Uh, I don't know. Fiorentina doesn't should be way, way, way higher. As should actually Torino, but I'm actually thinking now that Torino is not go uh, is really poised to not make it. If you look at the next round, um, there is really not the outstanding match matchup there. Um, First of all, Milan will have, has, has a relatively soft schedule coming up, so I think they should extend the lead. But if I look at the other, or not extend, but stay up, up there for a while, but you know, now that I've said it, they, they will not manage. Uh, if I look at the other, I mean, Lazio Hellas is probably the match ma ma of the sounds the best there. Cagliari Inter, I, I don't see much. Atalanta, Fiorentina, by the names will be interesting, but Fiorentina is so bad at the moment. Bologna, Roma, potential potential uh, slip up. Napoli, Sampdoria, yeah, and Genoa, Juve. I honestly think that all the big teams will get wins. And now that I said it, one of them will, of course, fail. So yeah, that was it for Serie A action this weekend. Um, again, let me know what you thought about the games. Uh, add something in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the little bell icon so that you get an update whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, wish you a wonderful day. Bye!